The Leafs just beat one of the best teams in the NHL, and all I can focus on is Canucks fans on Twitter. I don't regret any of it. Ah! Whoa! Are you serious? <laughs> Mind blown. I need idea. <laughs> I'm dumb. Deli hard. We get to the game, please. Ah! win 3-1 over the Anaheim Ducks. More importantly, the Leafs are not the Vancouver Canucks. I don't want to spend too much time on this because this is a Leafs post-game video, but wow! So the Canucks gave up a three-goal lead in the third period of their game against the Islanders on the same night as the Leafs-Ducks game. That's not really news because teams give up three-goal leads all the time, actually. Insert obvious Leaf joke here. But the Predators gave up a three-goal lead to the Sens that very night. The difference is the Preds won in overtime and the Canucks gave up seven goals in the third period, tying a franchise record for most goals against in a single period. It's so hard to watch, so why can't I look away? There are a lot of fascinating things in sport, a lot of fascinating things in hockey. And there's this phenomenon. So there are fan bases that are well accustomed to failure, we'll call it. They have all the right defense mechanisms built in. They, they can handle losses with some, with some dignity. I'd say Leafs fans have handled it pretty well for the last few decades. Oilers fans might be the kings of it right now. A lot of Islanders fans, ironically in this case, are actually pretty funny. But then sometimes there are fan bases that are not accustomed to such failure. But sports franchises, much like the great empires before us, rise and fall. And it's really interesting watching a fan base of a team accustomed to winning the division every year going to this. Eddie Lack, after a pretty strong performance, looking awful. And then in the post game, John Tortorella goes, well, I didn't feel Jakob Markstrom was ready. Now, Steve, what does this all have to do with the Leafs? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I just wanted to talk about it. Well, nothing except for the fact that Reimer has an expiring contract and I'm pretty sure he trains in BC in the off season. But anyway, I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't. I, I don't. I just. I just. I gotta put that in your head. I gotta let you know. You should be thanking me, frankly. You should. You should send me like a like a birthday cake. My birthday is on Wednesday. Not that anyone asked. But the first part of my present arrived, and it was a three-one Leafs win over Anaheim. Can we talk about Phil Kessel? Just can. can mm? Just a little bit. Three points in this one, giving him 73 points in 66 games. If he scores on the pace he's been averaging so far this season, Phil Kessel will reach the 90 point plateau. In fact, he's on pace for 90 points exactly. Well, 90 points something, but you can't score point something points. You're welcome to try. But how great is that? How rare is that? In the whole NHL, it's not rare. Usually the top scorer in the league will have at very least 90 points, sometimes hitting the 100 point plateau and up. But Kessel, who already has an 82 point season with the Leafs under his belt could be the first Leaf since Matt Sundin to hit the 90 point plateau. Well, it's not that impressive. Matt Sundin played for the Leafs only a few years ago. But consider that the last time Sundin hit 90 points was in the 1996-97 season. That was 17 years ago. Morgan Riley was three. He just turned 20. Matt, there's a solid chance that a bunch of people watching this right now were not alive the last time a Toronto Maple Leaf scored 90 points in a season. And with 34 goals so far, it's possible Kessel could get 40 by the end of the season. No Leaf has done that since <gasps> Matt Sundin once again, not as long ago, but still 2001-2002. Now, the other three-point lead from this game, Tyler Bozak. Now, there was a very silly debate going on on Twitter. Basically, another one of those watch the games things. Well, I like to think of myself as a pro stats guy, pro analytics, and I did watch the game, weirdly. And I think anyone who watched that game and a lot of the games recently would be like, hey, Bozak's doing pretty well. It's not a personal vendetta. I don't want him to suck. I don't think any Leaf fan wants Tyler Bozak to suck. He scores the first goal of the game, Game, strips Ryan Getzlaff to initiate the second goal of the game and then begins the play that sets up the third goal of the game. Both beautiful finishes by Kessel, by the way. The one pass and the one, you know what I mean. Tyler Bozak does a lot of good things. A lot of things better than other players. I think he makes good passes. The Leafs' power play hasn't always been great this season and he's got seven power play goals. And while the Leafs are good in shootouts, now they haven't always been and Bozak has been money in that department. He even scored a penalty shot. There's just a couple notions about the guy where I go, oh, okay, give it a rest. One is that he's this amazing defensive center, and I just don't think that's true. That top line, for as much as it scores, is outshot all the time. Another is that he's this face-off amazing expert, and he's like 50% this season, and he's a slightly better option than most of the other Leaf centers. He's not bad at them, certainly. He's pretty good, but he's like slightly above league average. I don't think you can judge a player based on one good season, but I will give him this. It's one hell of a good season. And this whole is he or isn't he a number one center thing? Well, well, a center who gets about a point a game on the team's top line, that's a number one center. So for right now, that's where that argument is heading. Now for the team, Leafs beat the Ducks 3-1. I thought they looked pretty good 
what do you think the shots were? I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty surprised. Maybe like 30, 25? The Ducks outshot the Leafs 44 to 23. For those of you without a calculator handy, the Ducks got 21 more shots than the Leafs. That's not a coursey thing and eh, push up my glasses, that is the Leafs got outshot to blood. 19 to seven in the second, 16 to five in the third. How about that goaltending? I'm not 100% sure who brought it up on Twitter, I think it was Michael Trakos, but when exactly does the Jonathan Bernier for Vesna conversation start? Personally, I'd give it to Ben Bishop right now, but Bernier's gotta at least be in the conversation, maybe even get a nomination. Where would the Leafs be without him? Best part? Best part? Reimer's behind him. The Leafs have one of the best goaltending tandems in the league, you guys. Hopefully they don't trade him to the Devils and Panthers for a guy they don't think's ready yet. But anyway, last thing, this road trip will define the Leafs season and where they end up. It's five games, they won the first one. But it's the Death Valley road trip. I wrote about this in my pregame article on theleafsnation.com. Death Valley is California in the NHL. Heading into this game, the Ducks were second in the NHL, the Sharks were fifth, and that's who the Leafs have next, and then after that, it's the Kings who are in eighth. You come out of that with three out of a possible six points, and I think that's a victory, and the Leafs already have two. Then you got the Wings, who are tied for the final playoff spot, and the Caps, who are one game back. One point back, which you can make up in one game. That's that's where the mistake came from. You see, I'm not, I'm not actually dumb. A little bit dumb. This road trip defines where the Leafs are gonna end up. Right now where they are, second in their division, Division and they will play Montreal in the first round. I'm okay with this. Please, just, I'm okay. Please. Question of the game, is that your dream Leafs Habs first round? Because it's mine. That's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like on this video if you liked it. Click subscribe if you really liked it. And I will see you as the Death Valley adventure continues.